Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the training today. Hopefully you guys can hear me, see me. I see you guys all in the chat hopping in from all over the world. So welcome. Good morning. Let's get started. I know a lot of people are still hopping on here. If you can hear me and see me, please confirm in the chat before I get started, because we definitely would like to have our technology working for us today. Confirmed. Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, you guys, let's hop right into it because uh, I am just absolutely excited to bring this training with you guys. Here's how this training came to be. Just really, really quick. I decided to hop back into the field and try and troubleshoot with people on their businesses and what was ultimately holding them back from mastering the network marketing industry. And what I found was time after time, phone call after phone call, it seemed like everybody was struggling with the same issue and that was recruiting. So I decided to put together some training that hopefully will help you guys understand the process, how to overcome objections, how to break the ice, get into those conversations to begin with, and also how to duplicate this process in your team because ultimately it's not what necessarily works for one person, it's what duplicates for everyone. So that's what this training is about today. I'm super excited, so let's get right into it. All right, now that you guys can hear me, see me, let's go to our next slide. One second here. All right, so let's start out by talking about this. Why do we need to learn recruiting? For some people, they're super intimidated by the word recruiting. In fact, I almost wanted to call it something else just to not scare anybody away by the thought of having to recruit. In fact, this is oftentimes one of our objections when people are joining this industry to begin with. Well, I don't want to have to recruit. I don't want to have to talk to my friends and family. I don't have to, you know, you know, all of this. People get so caught up over the word recruiting. But let me just tell you this. There's a reason why there's some resistance when it comes to recruiting. And that's Basically, because through our own educational system, through the standard success trajectory, we are really, we're really only taught one way to succeed, and that is to get good grades, go to college, get a job, retire, and eventually have some time, money, freedom. So we're not really taught necessarily how to do sales or how to build a business or how to become an entrepreneur. We're not taught any of those things. And, and it doesn't matter what type of entrepreneur that you actually are, you're still going to have to learn how to recruit people, right? You're still going to have to learn how to bring sales through the door. You're still going to have to figure out how to connect with people because in every single business, it's going to be a people business. Otherwise, how are you going to get customers? How are you going to get affiliates? How are you going to get, you know, if you're a doctor and you're doing a doctor's office, how are you going to get patients through the door, right? Eventually, you're going to have to master this skill as an entrepreneur, okay? So that's one thing. Secondly, what holds us back from recruiting, why we need to learn this is uh, our money mindset. We get like some kind of anxious feelings around talking to people, right? And, and sometimes that's a deeper issue within ourselves, which is I'm not worthy of creating lots of money for myself or money is the root of all evil or we're afraid somehow of making money. And because of that, we associate recruiting with making money and somehow that feels guilty but i'm here to tell you money is is not the root of all evil okay in fact money can be used for good and i want you guys to start to shift your mindset a little bit about how creating income in your business and bringing people into your business is actually a really good thing because not only are you empowering yourself you're empowering them to create money as well and this is the goal right this is the goal because you can't help a lot of people from poverty. You just can't. You can help a lot of people when you've got the tools and the mindset to be able to do so. Okay. So let's get on. Uh, lastly, actually, before I move on to the next slide, this is the lifeblood of this business. Like I said, it's the lifeblood of any business. And ultimately in network marketing, the goal is to become the leader, right? The leaders are the people that are making all the money, right? So ultimately we have to master this skill if we want to become a leader in this industry. And I'm gonna tell you guys and teach you guys today how exactly we're gonna get that done. All right, moving right along. So here's our first step. When you're first having a conversation with somebody, it's important you do not skip this step. This is absolutely crucial. In fact, what I found from mentoring some of you guys, I've seen this step is skipped the most and people go straight into talking about their opportunity, talking about their, their products or talking about something that involves them instead of focusing on 
the person that they're talking to. So do not skip this step, okay? You have to break the ice. That's step number one. You've got to find common ground with the person. Now, if you're talking to them on Facebook or Instagram or some form of online social media, sometimes you can just reference a comment or a post that you found them in. How did you find this person to begin with? Or maybe you found them in the grocery store to begin with. That's what you have in common. So you can stir up a conversation based on your common ground. An easy way also to make common ground with somebody or break the ice is to compliment them. That's the easiest way I've found, especially if I'm in person, I'll compliment somebody. I'll say, man, you've got great hair, or I love your dress, or I love your shirt, or whatever. That's easy to do when you're in person. Online, it doesn't really make as much sense. So I'm going to compliment them on something that they posted. Hey, I loved your post about X, Y, Z. And, you know, I feel exactly the same way. What led you into, you know, feeling that way? So let's say they post uh, something about the earth and taking care of our planet. I'm going to say, hey, I love your post about becoming more eco-friendly. As I've become a more conscious person, I've tried to make the decision in my own household to become, you know, more conscious of our recycling habits and things like that, right? I'm bringing up something that they're talking about, they're focusing on, right? And that's how I'm going to start my conversation with them. So break the ice. That's number one. Find something in common. Compliment them. It seems like basic, right? But don't skip this step. It's absolutely, absolutely crucial. Step number two. This is form, okay? Use form to fact find about their life. The more information that you can gather about them, the better. And why? Because you're going to be armed with the knowledge of what exactly they're looking for in their life, right? Or what their biggest need is. And you need to know the person's need and what they want because you cannot help somebody if you don't have that information. So sometimes, if we skip this step and we say, hey, I love your shirt. Let me tell you about my business. How awkward is that, right? Like, I don't even know if you need a business yet. I don't even know, you know, what, what you need. Maybe you're a multimillionaire and you're completely self-sufficient and you maybe this business just isn't for you, right? Or maybe you're struggling and you, to put food on the table and you just need an extra $500 a month, right? I need to know that information. So I'm going to fact find as much as I can without coming off as kind of a creep, like over asking questions. I have to try to do this in a friendly way so that they feel comfortable and confident and ultimately that they feel like I care about them because that's what it's about. So right off the bat, F stands for family or where you're from. I see you're from the Las Vegas area. Fantastic. What brought you here? Do you have family here? I'm going to open up that conversation, right? Like, yeah, I've, I've been in the Las Vegas area for seven, seven years. Oh, that's amazing. So I guess you've got family here. Yeah, I've got family here. Uh, or no, I don't have any family here. That's spectacular. Now, why am I asking about their family? It seems kind of personal at first, right? Well, imagine this. You need to know more about their family because this is going to help you recommend products to them later on in the conversation, especially if they've got dogs or pets or whatever. You know, you can kind of customize product gatherings, right, or recommendations for them based on their current life situation. If they're just a single person and it's just them, but maybe they're, you know, obsessed with fitness, like that's going to give me some clues as to what to recommend to them later on, right? So I'm going to have that information. I'm going to keep that in the back of my head. So F is family, where you're from. Occupation is O. What do you do for a living? I love to ask this question. And I love to ask this question because it, nine times out of 10, it comes right back to me. And when they ask me what I do, this is where we can pivot into more of a business conversation, right? But that's coming up coming up next. So occupation, what do you do for a living? I'm a truck driver. Fantastic. How long have you been doing that? I've been, I've been driving trucks for 12 years. Wow. You must love it if you've been doing it that long. Like I'm always going to say that, even if they say I'm a nail tech. Oh, how long have you been doing that? That's 30 days. Wow. You must love it if you've been doing it that long. I don't care if they say they've been doing it for five minutes. I'm just going to say you must love it if you've been doing it that long. Why am I going to say that to them? This is a key phrase. So if you want to write this down, write this down. I'm going to ask them this. If they love their job, why am I going to ask them that? Well, because they're going to say, they're going to laugh. Maybe they're going to say, no, I actually hate my job, but I do it because I have to pay the bills. That's what most people say. It's a sad reality that we live in. Most people are not doing what they love. 
but this gives us an opportunity to help them do what they love. So that's why I say it like that. If they say, I love my job, but it doesn't pay enough. I love my job. I mean, this is an opportunity for somebody to tell you what their needs are, right? I love it. You know, it really gives me the work life balance. If they're absolutely, you know, positive about it, then that's amazing. Then this is not their need. So I'm going to move on to the next category here, which is our recreation. So outside of work, what do you do for fun? Recreation is what you do for fun. You guys go on vacations. Are you like a Disney family? You guys do the, the theme parks once a year. You go on vacation. Are you a Florida kind of vacation vibe beach person? Are you international kind of traveler? You know, what do you guys do for fun? Especially if they're a family. Are you traveling with a family of six? Are they tra traveling with just their spouse? You know, if, if travel is what they do for fun. Or maybe they say, I just love to read or like to Netflix and chill. <laughs> like, I want to know what kind of person this is. Where they, where they spend their time, right? This is going to help me understand how I can help them. So maybe they're going to say, we love to go to the theme parks, you know, once a year. And, uh, you know, wish we could go more, but that's where we go because I have two weeks off a year. My job lets me have. So because I get two weeks off, we go, we go to the theme parks in Florida, you know, or California or whatever. Or we go to Dubai once a year, visit family there, whatever the reason is. Like, I want to know what they do for fun. And why do I want to know that? Well, because I know in the back of my head that I can help them do more of what they want and also earn income. It's a crazy, uh, you know, idea, I know, but my job is to help them have more fun in their life, right? So they have more money to, to spend on having fun. All right, so moving on to number N, or number M, on M, motivation and mission. Okay, what is our motivation? What is your mission? What gets you up in the morning? What fires you up every single day? What get, like if, if you had all the money in the world and didn't have to think about it anymore, what would you do with your time? What would you do? Maybe you would spend it on recreation, maybe. But what motivates you? What really fires you up? What is your innermost desire? Now, I'm probably not going to come out and just say, what's your innermost desire? Because they're going to be like, why are you asking me that? <laughs> right? We're going to try to smooth our way into this. Like, what motivates you to do what you do? Money. I'm motivated by money. Okay, maybe not, right? Maybe some people, yes. Maybe some people are like, I'm motivated by the mission. You know, my ultimate goal is to, is to bring a higher awareness to the planet, <laughs> whatever the mission. My mission is to help foster kids all over the world. My mission is, you know, I'd love to be able to give back to my community. I'd love to, you know, X, Y, Z. Mission doesn't necessarily have to mean charity though. Mission could also mean what are their goals, right? So I would like to know a little bit about their goals. What's your ultimate goal? Like, what's, what's your end goal? Because here's the thing, when you're doing uh, the grades, you know, college, work, retire, and then freedom, there's a difference between these goals, right? There's an end goal. The end goal is to have enough money so that you can spend your time on whatever you want, right? That's the end goal. Almost for everybody has the same end goal. But we get stuck in the means goals, which is the process of getting to the end goal. So I wanna ask what their goal is because again, almost 10 times out of 10, their end goal is the same as my end goal, which is to have enough money so that I own my time. Most people are gonna say, oh, to have extra money so I can invest, so I can travel, so I can, what are your goals? I wanna know what your goals are. I wanna know what your mission is. And also I wanna know if you have a plan to get there. That's amazing that you wanna change the world and you wanna donate you know, millions of dollars to foster children all over the world. I love that mission. I, I actually work on that mission as well. What is your plan for getting there? This is key, guys. Write this part down. What's your plan? Okay. If they're going to say, uh, I love to do the Disney parks, we're back on recreation, right? What is your plan to being able to go there more often? Do you have a plan to get there? What is your plan? And they're going to say, well, just working my job, trying to save money, trying not to have an emergency that wipes out my savings. That's typically everybody's plan. Okay. If now, how we transition this is going to be on the next slide, but if I could show you a way, right, if I could show you a way to build another plan that will get you there faster, would you be open to taking a look at this opportunity? All right, so that's how we build our form. That's how we fact find about their life. You've got to spend enough time in this 
you know, category or in this stage of recruiting, you have to spend enough time here to really understand this person, okay? Because ultimately, our job is to help them. It's not to sell them on something they don't want or need. We're only talking to people that have a want or a need, okay? People have absolutely no wants or needs. Well, you're going to have a very difficult time in trying to get them into your business, okay? So we got to figure out what that is. All right. Now, write this down too. What is your occupational phrase? Now, what is an occupational phrase? Your occupational phrase is your answer to when they ask you, what do you do for a living, right? Because they might ask you this back. What I found in conversations, they typically mirror, them, they mirror each other, right? And say, hi, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Like we ask the same questions back, it's polite, right? We do this, we do this without even thinking about it. What do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a teacher, that's great. What about you? They ask you, what about you? What do you do for a living? So you need to have this ready to go. You gotta have this phrase locked and loaded. You have to know exactly what you do for a living because if you mess this part up, you may lose the rest of the conversation. If you say, oh, I'm, um, I'm in one of those businesses, uh, you know, where the guy makes on all the money at the top, <laughs> you know, I, I'm in one of those uh, stay at home businesses, <laughs> you know, if you're starting to like describe what you do in a very vague and pyramid kind of way, they're going to be like red flag, <laughs> red flag, I'm not doing that, like, is this MLM, you're going to get objections right off the bat. And then now you're in objection land where you're trying to swim out of it and trying to like survive this conversation without looking dumb right <laughs> so this is why you need to have an occupational phrase you got to have an occupation phrase you got to have it in the bag here's a couple of examples of what you can use you guys are laughing because you know exactly what i'm talking about you're like yeah i did that before yeah i did that when i was starting out oh my god i'm still doing that now okay yes you guys get it you understand all right so number three know what your occupational phrase is here one, here's an example. I specialize in helping people earn extra income from home. Now, this is super vague, and I'm kind of against vague, especially if I'm talking to somebody that's like a truck driver or they're a, a teacher, right? Okay, let's use these occupations as an example. I specialize in helping truck drivers make additional income while they're on the road. I am going to customize my occupational phrase is going to work for whatever they actually do. Because they're gonna be like, no way. <laughs> are you serious? How did we meet? This is, the stars are aligning. Like, how did you know that this is exactly what I needed, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna specialize in whatever it is that they need or want. Because again, our company, My Daily Choice is just the vehicle to get people where they want. If you spend all the time talking about the features of the vehicle, people will tune out. I wanna know where it's going to take me. Do you understand? So we have to think about it like that. So let's talk about if this is a teacher, all right? I specialize in helping teachers earn an extra income during those summer months where they're not collecting a paycheck. You want to do really want to do summer school? You want to do full-time school and you want to have to volunteer for summer school to make extra money? Or if you're like my parents growing up, my parents were teachers. They had a lawn service business in the summer where they mowed people's lawns to make extra income because they had four kids. So they were always looking for a way to make extra money outside of their teacher time during the year. So you can quite frankly go out to a teacher and say, well, I specialize in helping teachers earning extra income during those summer months, right? So whatever they tell you, you specialize in helping them make extra income while they're doing that thing that they do. Does that make sense? All right, so that's one option. Number two is I recently partnered with a $100 million a year company that specializes in helping people create time freedom in their lives. Why am I saying it like that? That's bragging a little bit. I'm saying it like that because now I'm leveraging my company. Like it's not, it's not just me. Like don't look at me, right? Look at who I'm partnered with. I'm leveraging something bigger and greater than myself. So you feel like you can actually talk to me about this because you work with an awesome company. Tell me more about your company that you partnered with. Absolutely, I would love to do that. Let me give you access to our online tour. Got it? Okay, that's what makes sense. Okay, number three is I specialize in helping stay-at-home moms earn a paycheck. Some people don't have an occupation right now. Some people are literally just wiping butts all day. <laughs> that's me when I'm not working, okay? Some of us are moms. Some of us are dads. Some of us are unemployed. Some of us are, you know, in between jobs, right? So I specialize in helping people who are in between jobs earn a paycheck from where they're at right now. 
Does that make sense? Okay, I hope that makes sense, you guys, because this is crucial. You have to know what your occupational phrase is. Now, what happens next? You need to wait for their response. This is not your opportunity to now go word vomit and all over the conversation and say, now, let me tell you about my house of brands. Let me tell you about my four pillars and why Josh and Jen are great. And, and no, they're not ready yet. They're not ready. We're going to wait for their response. Patience. <laughs> okay. Because what they say next is going to change what you do next, right? So this is a game of chess, not checkers. This is a game of chess. So once they make their move, we wait to see where they're going to go because that's going to change where we move our pieces next. All right. Next slide. We wait for their response. Now, they're going to have one of two different ways of responding. It's either going to be positive response or a negative response, All right? Positive is, wow, this sounds amazing. How did you know? Like, I'm a teacher that needs extra income. Like, you totally, how did we meet? This is amazing. All right, I need to know more about this. Tell me what you do or tell me how I can do it. Positive response. A positive response is going to lead to you asking the question, which I'm going to tell you on the next slide. Positive goes to ask the question. A negative response, you may get a negative response where they come back at you and they go, is this one of those pyramid things? Is this MLM? Please tell me this is not MLM. Because if, if this is MLM, I don't, I don't know if I can do this, right? Then they get all stressed out about it. But I, I'm not going to tell them about my business yet until I know if they have an aversion to MLM first. <laughs> like I need to have that information first, right? So if they say that, then I'm going to go to handle objections. I'm going to go to my handle objections slide. And then I'm going to ask the question. So it's just one extra step if you get a negative response. Negative response doesn't mean, oh, I lost the sale. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means they need more information or they need more clarity about how they feel about this industry, which we're going to give them. Does that make sense? All right, moving on. So positive response. Wow, this sounds amazing. I'd love to learn more about what you do. Great. Well, if I could show you how to create an additional source of income while doing what you love, while driving your truck, while teaching those kids, while staying home, you know, in between jobs, uh, would you be open to learning how to do that? Yes, I would. Nobody's going to say no to that. No, no, actually, I love being miserable. I don't think that's for me. Like then almost nine times out of 10, they're going to say yes, right? They're going to say Yes, I'm open because they don't want to be perceived as somebody that's closed minded. So when you ask them if they're open to learning how open to learning, not are you open to joining my business right now? And give me your credit card. No, that's we don't rush that. Right. Are you open to learning? Yes, I'm open to I'm open to learning. I'm a very open minded learning kind of person. Thank you for asking. OK. And number two is do you keep your options open when it comes to achieving your goals? You said your goal was to take more vacations. You said your goal was to have extra money so that you can retire. You said your goal was, your mission was to help foster kids. So do you keep your options open on how you're going to get to that goal? Do you keep your options open or is it only the way you're doing it is the only way that it can happen? Well, yeah, I keep my options open when it comes to achieving my goals. All right, fantastic. Now let's talk about objections. So let's say they give you a negative response. We've all had negative responses. You've been in this industry more than five minutes and you've talked to three people, you've had a negative response, guaranteed. Unless you're just an absolute rock star and everybody's a yes for you, which is amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. If not, if you're like the rest of us out here <laughs> trying to get out of objection land and you get a negative response, this is how you handle these. All right, so rule of thumb, feel, felt, found. These are the three steps to remember when you're handling any objection. Number one, I understand how you feel. We're going to bridge that emotional connection, okay? Because they need to know you're not just a salesperson trying to get them. You're actually somebody that understands their feelings. Like, we care about you. We understand how you feel. Number two, when I made the decision to start my own business, I felt the same way. I'm validating it for you. Like, you're allowed to be you know, skeptical. You're allowed to be negative at first. You're allowed to have, you know, questions. It's okay because when I joined this business, I felt the same way. Number three, what I found was though, that my excuses, my objections, my, my responses, that's the exact reason why I needed to do this. 
All right, now let's put this into some action. I'm gonna give you guys some real examples of objections that people get on a real time basis, okay? So objection number one, what's the financial obligation for this business? How much money is it gonna cost me? How much do I have to pay every month? Is this one of these things where I gotta put money up front? Well, I'm so glad you asked. So this is how I'm gonna answer this, okay? All right, well, it depends on what your goals are. If you don't have big goals, it's not gonna cost you very much money at all, okay? If you've got big goals, it may cost you a little bit more money because it depends on how fast you wanna to get to those goals. That's what I'm basically getting at here. It depends on what your goals are. There are ways to maximize our compensation plan and there's also an option to work your way up. All of this is covered in the online tour. Would you like access to this now or after we hop on the phone? Would you like access to the online tour? Notice I'm not saying presentation at all, because the moment you say presentation, they're like, mm, pyramid scheme, <laughs> like they've been trained, like there's trigger words for people. As soon as you say home business or work from home business, they go scam. I don't know what it is about some like the programming that these people are getting. I have no idea why it's this way. So I try to change my verbiage a little bit so that it makes sense to them in their language. Do you understand? Would you like access to this online tour or would you like to hop on the phone? Those are your options. So what's it gonna be? You pick. Either way, you're getting in this business. <laughs> so which one's gonna be? All right, I would like access to the online tour. Fantastic. All right, so now we've gotten over our objection. We're going to the next step. Sometimes they may say another objection and then you're just, you have to revisit this again, right? Well, I don't know if I have the time. I felt the same way. I understand how you feel. And what I found was this business gave me more time. Well, I don't think my spouse is gonna like this. I understand how you feel. I felt the same way. And what I found was my spouse became supported after I started having success. You see, like this works for every excuse or every objection that they can give you. And you just keep revisiting until they're like out of excuses and out of objections. And then they go, fine, I'll just, I'll take a look because you're beating me at this game and I get it, I understand. Okay, the next one, let's use this one. I don't have the time. I understand how you feel. I felt the same way when decided to start my own business. But what I found was this business was the only plan I had going for me that was actually gonna give me more time in the long run. Because let's think about it. If you're trading time for money in your job, you're gonna always be trading time for money. Like there's no way out of there. Like you have to put in your time in order to get out of this whole mess. You can't, you can't ever get ahead, right? So this is exactly why I needed to start my own business so that I could take back my time. Make sense? All right, so let's go to objection number three. I love this one. This one's my favorite. This one involves bringing in the big guns, your upline leader, okay? Here's how we handle this objection. How much success have you had? Show me the proof. How much money have you made? Have you guys encountered this yet? This is great. Okay, so here's my response to this. And of course, you're gonna put this in your own words, but this is the response for this. And when I am saying my name, Jenna, in the example, you can put in your upline. Maybe it's Robert, maybe it's you know Lynn, maybe it's Judy, maybe it's a whoever, Alicia, I don't know. Whoever your upline leader is that's 50K or above, you're gonna use their story, whoever you're working with, okay? If you're like, I'm not working with anybody, you can use Jenna, you can use whoever you'd like here, okay? All right, that is 50K or above that is willing to do a call with you. All right, here, check it out. Show me your proof of success. How much money have you made? I just started working with this company and I'm being mentored by Jenna, who is the top female income earner in this industry. She's helped create several millionaires. She's very selective with who she works with, but if you're serious about starting your own business or earning extra income and you want to learn from the best, I'm sure she will help you out too. When are you available for a quick chat? If they say, oh, let me see. I think I could do that. Let me look at my calendar. Ask Jenna for a three-way chat or phone call. And then once she gives you some times, you go back to that person and say, Jenna's available tomorrow at four o'clock or next week at three o'clock. What works best for you? See, now I'm taking, I'm taking the pressure off of me, right? As the, as the leader, the upcoming leader in this business. Don't look at my paycheck, look at Jenna's paycheck. Don't look at my paycheck, look at Robert's paycheck. Don't look at me, look at the pro. They've done it, I'll teach you how to connect with them. They have the answers. I don't have the answers, they have the answers. Does that make sense? So it takes the pressure off of you. This is when you need to leverage your leader that you're working with. Now, for all the leaders that are 50K and above, 
listen, you need to be doing these calls with your people. You need to be available for your people because otherwise, how are you going to raise them up out of this mess? You have to help them get out of this mess. And that is your obligation as a 50K or above. You got to do these chats with people. You got to do the calls with people and you got to help them become their best self in this business. All right. So that's how you handle that. Next one. Is this MLM? We get this one just quite, quite frankly, <laughs> we get this one. All right. And I would say, yes, I wouldn't touch it if it wasn't. Absolutely. Because if it were anything else, I don't think it would be for me. So you can quite frankly, just say it like that. Just be very, very upfront. You're owning it. You're not dancing around it. We're not pretending we're not MLM. We're not that kind of company. <laughs> there are companies that pretend they're not MLMs. We're not one of those. We're going to own it. We're proud of it. This is an amazing industry. This is a huge industry. This is an important industry that has helped several millions of families every single year. So you need to own that and feel good about that, okay? Just because society says MLM is bad doesn't mean it's bad, okay? It means it is actually good. They just don't understand it. This is a pyramid scheme. No, those are illegal. I run a, a legal business. I don't run illegal businesses. And then I think Todd says, uh, he's like, why is that what you're looking for? <laughs> right, you can add that on there as well. Is this pyramid scheme? No, those are illegal. Why is that what you're looking for? No, I'm not. I'm not looking for an illegal pyramid scheme. I just thought that that's what you were. Okay, so we we addressed that. Moving right along, confidence. You got to be confident in this direction. Just answer it very quickly and then move on. So then they may come back with this because that doesn't technically always squash it from there. They're going to come back with some more uh, objections from there, right? Which is, I don't want to be an MLM. I don't want to recruit people under people. I'm not good at sales. I couldn't imagine trying to sell to my friends and family. They sometimes come back with that, right? So then this is what we say to that. I totally understand why you feel that way. I felt the same way before joining this industry too. I thought there was no way it could work out for me or that it was even legitimate. But what I found was the network marketing industry is pretty massive. It's bigger than the NFL. The only difference between this business model and others out there is our company pays regular people to spread the word instead of paying for other types of advertising, such as TV, radio, media, or billboards. Another thing to consider is that starting a traditional brick and mortar business takes thousands and thousands of dollars that most people don't have to get started. With this industry, there's very low overhead, so anyone can start. The network marketing industry creates more millionaires than any other industry in the world. Who, who got chills? I got chills. Man, that's a great response, okay? Because it, they, they have these feelings about network marketing and MLM because they don't understand it. They don't understand that it's just a business model. That's it. It's just a means of advertising. That's it, okay? It's not, it's not a scheme. It's not a pyramid. It's not anything other than a type of advertising that a, a company chooses to implement. You guys are the sales force of our brick and mortar business. My Daily Choice is a brick and mortar business. Did you know that? It's right here on Eastern Avenue in Henderson. It, it is a real business. We have a real shipping department. We've got real operations uh, team. Okay, we've got real customer service. We have real HR department. This is a real company and affiliates are our sales force. We pay our affiliates to spread the word. That's it. That's just the difference. That's the difference between this business and what else is out there. If you want to start a McDonald's, you better have hundred grand to get started, right? If you want to start a Chipotle, you better have, you know, 25 grand to get started, whatever it costs. I don't know, right? You have to have all of that money up front and then you have to still go recruit sales into your business and you have to learn the model of how to franchise and duplicate. It's no different than here, except the risk is much, much lower. Does that make sense? Okay, also we have a money back guarantee. So there's literally no risk involved with our company. All right, next. Let's wait for their response, okay? So now they're gonna say, wow, I didn't know that. Or, you know, they're gonna give you a negative or positive response from here, right? And if it's positive, we got, we're gonna book the appointment. If it's negative or another objection, we're gonna go back to feel, felt, found and address it. We don't skip over them. We just address them and we move on. So let's say now they're saying, all right, I'm interested. Tell me more. Now we're going to book the appointment. The appointment is this. The appointment is scheduling a time to give them all the business opportunity details. All right. This is 
basically we're scheduling in their presentation that they're going to see their business overview, their online tour. Now I do the appointment before I do my, my capture page, send my website or my tour, because when you can connect with somebody on the phone, they can feel your energy. They can feel your sincerity. They can tell if you're a good person. They can, you know, they, they can, you can build that relationship much, much faster, you know? So that's why I try to get people on the phone first, but not everybody does that. And that's okay. So let's talk about that. Tell me more. I'm interested. They're interested. So we're going to go to the yes side here. I'm glad you asked, but right now I'm heading into a meeting right now. Can I give you a call in the next 20 minutes or tomorrow around 2.30? So I'm going to ask them, basically, I'm going to give them two different options here. Also, I'm a busy, I'm a busy business person. I'm a millionaire. I don't have time to just hop on the phone right now, right? So I'm going to just create a little buffer there. I'm glad you asked, but I'm heading into a meeting right now. You guys are like, I don't have no meetings. That's okay. Just, just hear me out for a second. I'm glad you asked, but I'm heading into a meeting right now. Can I give you a call in the next 20 minutes or around 2.30 or around four o'clock tomorrow or whatever? Give them two options. And if they say, yes, okay, I can talk to you tomorrow at 2.30, schedule the phone call. And then on this phone call, you're gonna just rehash their goals. You can say, so tell me what you know interests you about, you know, working on your goals. Why do you need to do this now? And they're going to say, well, you know, like I said, I'm a teacher. I don't make a lot of money in the summer uh, and I need to supplement my income. Right. Okay. So if they say that, which is typically what they're going to say, you're going to say, based on what you've said on the call here today, based on what you're telling me, I think you'd be a great fit for this business. Based on what you're saying, I think you'd be a great fit for this business. And so I'd like to send you access to our online tour so that you can get all the details. So still on the phone, I'm not doing the presentation. I'm not gonna do it because it's gonna take too long. I'm gonna mess it up. Like I want them to watch the video. I want them to opt in and I want them to see it firsthand. Okay, does that make sense? So the phone call is just to kind of rehash the form a little bit, just to develop that relationship a bit further establish yourself as a leader that can help guide them to success right and if they're like yes this sounds amazing please you know I, I need to know how to do this okay I'm gonna go ahead and give you access to my online tour here's my website put in your details watch the video write down any questions that you have and then we're gonna hop back on the phone to discuss does that make sense all right now if they say no I can't get on the phone right now. Some people say, no, I don't want to talk on the phone or I'm busy right now, or I'm making my kids lunch or I'm at work right now. Okay. So this is what I say to that. Typically when I work one-on-one -on -one with people, I prefer to chat over the phone, but I understand your time constraints right now. Would you prefer to take an online tour in, of our business instead? Would you prefer to take an online tour of the business instead of a phone call? Yes. I would love to do that. Okay, great. So then we're going to send our website, which is this slide right here. So after you've been given permission to send your link, you're going to send them a capture page that would most appeal to them. All of our capture pages are broken down by different demographics, different product styles, uh, different, you know, product, you know, gather uh, offerings, I should say, like some is Hint Mama, some is more for mantra, some is, you know, for our peak sprays or whatever. And it's all different demographics. So based on who I'm talking to, I'm gonna select the capture page that I think would most appeal to them. Does that make sense? Now, don't forget this part right here. After you've been given permission, you gotta get permission to send your link before you send your link. You never send somebody a link until you get permission. Otherwise, they're gonna feel very much like you're pressuring them. And we do not wanna have that. We do not wanna pressure them into anything. Would it be all right if I give you online access to the tour right now? Yes. You, the more times you get them to say yes, the, the higher chances of, of them signing up in the business is gonna be. Does that make sense? Okay. So now we're off the phone. They took the tour. They wrote down your questions. They have some objections. We're gonna revisit those objections I feel felt found, right? Or they have no objections and they say, wow, this seems amazing. I can totally see myself doing this. You're gonna to say to them, where do you see yourself starting? 
Where do you see yourself starting? As a customer, where you just buy products, right? No pressure there. No commissions also, but you can be a customer. Do you want to start part-time, full-time, or all in? So they just saw this on the tour, right? They just saw these packs on the tour, the House of Brands packs, the essentials, you know, pack and all of that, the all-in pro pack. Okay, so now I'm going to ask them, where do you see yourself starting? And they say, and they're, they're going to say, well, see, I've got about $200 or whatever. So I think I'm going to do the full-time pack. I think I'm going to come in as, a, as an executive. Okay, fantastic. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and get your order in. They can do that because they were just on the tour. Place your first order and we're going to set up your business. We're going to get your business started. I'm going to guide them into setting up their business. That's the vocabulary that I'm going to use. Oops, skip one. Hold on, go back. There we go. After they join. Now, why is this in a recruiting video? We just recruited them because let me tell you, you're not done with this person after they join the business. You need to follow up to complete this duplication process, okay? So after they join, when can we get on the phone to get your business set up? Now they're probably gonna wanna get on the phone with you because you're the guide, you're the mentor, you're the leader that's going to teach them how to, su how to succeed in this industry, right? So they're gonna be more op uh, more interested, I should say, in getting on a phone call with you. So when can we uh, get on the phone? I have two options available. All right, we're going to do your business launch call Thursday, whatever. Thursday comes around, tomorrow comes around, next 20 minutes comes around, whenever the appointment is you set. Again, because you want to introduce yourself as a leader, especially if you didn't get on the phone with them previously. And on this call, you're going to say, there's two things we need to do to get set up here. One, you're going to watch the launch your business video by Josh Zweigel. He's the founder and the CEO of the company. There's going to be a video in this, on this and your training in your back office. Number two, you're going to watch the 10 steps to recruiting mastery video by Jenna Zweigel. You're going to watch the video that you're watching right now. Do you see how this duplicates? It's a circle of life. Okay. And because you want them to learn this information so that they can get started right away and get off to the right, uh, the right foot, okay? I'm gonna tell them on this call that you need to start making your list of 25 people. Make a list of 25 names with their contact info of who you'd like to share this opportunity with. Who else do you know that's a teacher that needs to also make extra income during summer months? Who else do you know that's a truck driver that needs to make money while on the road? Who else do you know? fit into their life. Remember, we're all, we're all about customizing this opportunity for them. Who else do you know that also needs what you need? Oh man, well, I got a lot of truck driver friends. Oh yeah, all my friends are teachers. Okay, fantastic. All my friends are nurses. Fantastic, build a list. And I'm gonna teach you how to approach this list so that we can get your business built the right way. So there's three steps to duplication. One, we got a master recruiting. Number two, you're going to recruit five at full time and you're going to hit 1K affiliate. Three, we're going to help 50 people hit 1K affiliate. And now you're a 50K affiliate. What happens when you hit 50K affiliate? The email feature unlocks in your back office. Now you can email your team. You can reach out. You can schedule times to, to build with your team that needs a little extra help or, or whatever. Now you have access to emailing your team. You also get to become the leader on the video in the tour. Now your pretty face is on the video. Now you're the leader. So you hit 50K affiliate. So that is the duplication process. You notice I'm not talking about 5K, 10K, 25K. No, because we're in recruiting mode in our business until we get to 50K and even after 50K, because this is just so much fun. Why would you stop, right? But 50K affiliate, now you're the leader. We're duplicating this process all over again. I hope this makes a lot of sense to you guys. I put some time and thought into this based on the conversations I was having with you guys. And I am so excited that you guys now have the tools to become wildly successful in my daily choice. Thank you so much for hopping on today. And I will see you guys on our next training. Have a good one. See you guys.